Hello and welcome to part 4 of my mini-series of how-to security videos where I am going to show you how I configured Radius Authentication using EAP TLS from Windows Server for use in Brother training environments. Please note that it is a continuation from parts 1, 2 and 3 so unless you are watching this as a refresher course I recommend you watch them first. Links to them can be found in the description. So in this video we will create an EAP TLS network policy in Microsoft NPS, build a certificate management console with access to the required certificate stores, then use this console to export my server's CA certificate, as well as build a RADIUS certificate template. Once created, I will then need to publish the RADIUS certificate template and use it to build a RADIUS authentication certificate for Brother Device Authentication, which I will need to export in order to upload to my brother device. I will finally need to import the RADIUS certificate into my Active Directory user called Brother. Let's get started by creating an EAP TLS network policy in Windows Network Policy Server. Please remember that this is a continuation from the other three videos, where certain configurations in NPS have already been made. So from the Microsoft Network Policy Server, I am going to expand the Policies drop-down, and then right-click the Network Policies option underneath it. From this menu, I need to click the New option where the Network Policy Wizard will load. I'm going to give my EAP TLS policy an easy to recognise name. And we'll click the Next button to continue. From here, I need to configure what kind of device is going to manage network connection requests by clicking the Add button. The device I configured in part 3 of this mini-series of videos was a wireless access point or router. In Microsoft NPS, this is known as NAS NAS, which means Network Access Server. You may also hear this referred to as a supplicant. With it selected, I will click the Add button. And then from the middle set of tick boxes, I am going to select both the wireless and Ethernet options. I am selecting wireless because the access point I set up in my third video was wireless. I am also selecting Ethernet to give me the flexibility to add a radius supported wired switch or router later. But of course, if you are setting up a wired switch or router now, then of course you need to select it. I also need to select these access point types in the set of tick boxes below. Note that Ethernet is referred to as a cable, and wireless is wireless other. To confirm, I will click the OK button, followed by the Next button. Since I want my EAP TLS policy to allow authenticated users and devices to connect, I am going to select the Access Granted option, and will then click the Next button to continue. To ensure that my network policy is as secure as possible, I am going to deselect all of these less secure authentication methods. 
This is because Current Brother print, copy and scan devices that support RADIUS 802.1x authentication do not require them to be enabled. I am now going to click the Add button to add the EAP TLS authentication type, which in Microsoft NPS is called Microsoft Smart Card or Other Certificate. To confirm, I need to click the OK button. I am now going to select the CA certificate to be used as verification and encryption, which I can do by selecting this option and clicking the Edit button. From here, I need to change the server specific certificate as currently selected here with the CA certificate which can be used to verify this server's legitimacy. Now, I could have left the server certificate as is. However, I changed it just to demonstrate that other certificates can also be used. To confirm, I need to click the OK button, as well as the Next button to continue. I can now accept the default settings here, so we'll click the next button again. All these are doing is adding some additional rules to the policy. For example, how long can users and devices connect? And again, I'm going to accept the default settings here and just click the next button. To build my new policy, I will click the Finish button. And here is my policy. Before it can take effect, I need to restart the NPS server. To do this, I will right click the NPS local option and click the Stop NPS service button. To restart, I simply need to right click the NPS local option again and click the start NPS service button. I now need to do a few things with certificates. To make this process easier for me, I will create a custom certificate management console. To do this, I need to search for and open the Microsoft Management Console mmc.exe Right now it is empty. To add the required certificate options to it, I need to click the file option from the menu, followed by the add remove snapping option. I will start by clicking the certificate template snapping, followed by the add button. I will now select the Certificate Authority option and will then click the Add button like before. From here, I will select the Local Computer option and will then click the Finish button. I now need to click the Certificates option, followed by the Add button. I am going to select the My User Account option, followed by the Finish button. I also want to be able to see certificates that are required by the local computer. This is the last one I'm going to do. So to do this, I need to click the Certificate option again, followed by the Add button. This time, I am going to select the Computer Account option before clicking the Next button. I also want to be able to see certificates that are required by the local computer. To do this, I need to click the Certificates option again, followed by the Add button. This time, I'm going to select the Computer Account option before clicking the Next button. 
followed by the finish button. I can now close this window by clicking the OK button. This is what my new custom certificate management console looks like. I will be using it for most of this video, so I'm going to keep it open. I recommend if you are following this video that you also keep this open. I will let you know when you can close it. In this section, I'm going to export the CA certificate, which will be required to demonstrate Zero Trust in the next video of this mini-series. Now, if you don't require Zero Trust, you can skip this particular section and move on to 4.4. If you do need this, however, you will need to go back to the Custom Certificate Management Console and expand the Certificate Local Computer option. From here, I need to expand the Trusted Root Certificate Authorities option and select the Certificates sub-option below. I am now going to double-click one of my two CA certificates and then click the Details tab from the Certificates window. From here, I need to click the Copy to File button, which will open the Certificate Export Wizard. To start the export, I need to click the Next button. Since this certificate will eventually be uploaded into a Brother device, I need to export it in Base64 encoded X509 format before clicking the Next button. I am now going to specify a file name and location for where I want to export the CA certificate to, before clicking the Next button again. And finally finish. To confirm the export, I need to click the OK button. The CA certificate will now be exported and look something like this. To finish, I need to click the OK button, which will return me to the Custom Certificate Management Console. I'm going to need this again, so I'm going to leave it open. This is because in this section, I'm going to create a certificate template that will enable Brother devices to authenticate against my RADIUS server and wireless router. To do this, I need to go back to my Custom Certificate Management Console and click the Certificate Templates option. From here, I am going to duplicate and modify the user template, which is required in EAP-TLS 802.1x authentication. To do this, I simply need to right click it and then left click the duplicate template option. From this duplicate, I will start by giving it a new name. This is done from the general tab in the template display name section. The name of the template underneath will auto-populate as you type and automatically omit any unsupported characters. Next, I need to ensure that this certificate will be published in Active Directory by selecting this option. I now need to click the Request Handling tab and ensure that the Allow Private Key to be Exported option is selected. Next, I'm going to move over to the Security tab and select the Authenticated Users group. With them selected, I will ensure that they have full control over this certificate. I am also going to remove the Administrator user from this list. Next, I need to click the Subject Name tab and select the Supply in this Request option. 
I will click the OK button on the warning message. And then finally move over to the Extensions tab. In it is where you find what the certificate template does. I need to make some small changes. First by selecting the Application Policies option and then the Edit button. I will remove the encrypted file system and secure email policies, leaving only client authentication. This is because we only need the client authentication policy in order to authenticate Brother devices against 802.1x radius requests. To confirm, I will click the OK button and the Apply button. I can now close the template by clicking the OK button. Here is the new certificate template. Now that we have a new certificate template, it is time to publish it. Publishing it simply tells Windows to add it amongst the other live certificate templates when requesting one. This will make more sense in a few minutes. Again, I'm going to do this from the certificate management console I created earlier. Incidentally, you can save this console and use it later. I tend to save it to my documents and then pin it to the start menu. From it, I'm going to expand the certificate authority option and then expand the name of my certificate authority. From here, I need to right click the certificate templates folder and then hover my mouse over the new option. Then click the certificate template to issue option. From the list of templates, I will find and select the one I just created and will then click the OK button. Here is the new published template. Now that I've created and published my user certificate, I am now ready to use it to generate one for my brother device. By the way, I will show you how to upload this to the brother device in the next video. Again, from the certificate management console we created earlier, I'm going to expand the certificate's current user option. From it, I need to expand the personal option. Underneath, I'm going to right click the certificate's sub option and then hover my mouse pointer over the all tasks option before clicking the request new certificate option. This will load the certificate enrollment wizard. To get started, I need to click the next button. And again here. From the list of templates, I'm going to find the template I just created and published, then click the link underneath it. This will open a certificate properties wizard where I can manually create it a new identity. In case you were wondering, this is why I selected the Supply and Request option when creating the certificate template earlier. From here, I need to select the Common Name option from the Subject Name drop-down and then type a suitable common name in the value box underneath. This can be anything you want, but I recommend making it relevant to the certificate's purpose so that you can identify it later. To confirm this, I need to click the Add button. Next, I need to select the user principal name from the alternative name drop-down. This section does require a specific value, which is the username of the user I created in the first video of this mini-series, which is 
brother at brothertraining.net. To confirm this, I need to click the add button. I am now ready to move on and will click the general tab where I am going to give this certificate a meaningful friendly name and description. I now need to ensure that the private key is exportable, which I can do from the private key tab, underneath the key options section. The certificate properties is now ready. To continue, I will click the Apply button, followed by the OK button, which will bring me back to the Certificate Template Selection window. I am going to select the certificate I have just been working on, and then click the Enrol button. When the enrolment is complete, I can click the Finish button. My new RADIUS certificate, intended to authenticate Brother devices, is now ready. In order to get the certificate we just created into a Brother device, it needs to be exported. I am going to do this from the Certificate Management Console I keep leaving open. To export the certificate, I need to right click it. Then hover my mouse pointer over the All Tasks option and click the Export option. This will load the export wizard. From it, I will click the Next button. I need to ensure that the private key can be exported by selecting this option here before clicking the Next button to continue. And again here. In order to protect the private key, I need to create a password. To do this, I will first select the password option here, and will then enter and re-enter my chosen password. In production environments, I highly recommend making this password long and complex, using a series of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and symbols. To continue, I'm going to click the Next button, where I will specify a name and location for the exported certificate, before clicking the Next button, and the Finish button to complete the export. To confirm the export, I just need to click the OK button here, where it will look something like this. I can now close the Certificate Management Console. Just to repeat, if you want to use it again later and want to save time from having to manually reload each certificate snapping, you can save it. I tend to save it to my documents and then pin a copy of it to my Start menu for more convenient access. The last section of this video is to pair the certificate we just created and exported with the user I created in the first video. I'm going to do this from the Active Directory Users and Computers console. By the way, the section where to upload users certificates to is hidden by default. So to unhide it, I need to click the View menu and click the Advanced Features option. To find the user now, I need to expand the name of my domain and then select the Users option. From the list of users, I'm going to double click the name of the user called Brother Device that I created in the first video and then click the Published Certificates tab. Incidentally, this tab is only visible because I enabled the advanced features from earlier. From this section, I need to click the Add from Store button. Then click 
the more choices button where I can select the newly created Brother Radius certificate and click the OK button to confirm. To finish, I will click the Apply button, followed by OK. And we are done. I would like to finish this video with a summary. I started by creating an EAP TLS network policy in Windows Network Policy Server MPS. I then built a certificate management console for easy access to the relevant certificate stores. Using this certificate console, I then exported my server's CA certificate. I then created a RADIUS specific certificate template which I then published and used to create one for my brother device. In order for my brother device to use it, I needed to export a copy, including its private key. I then imported the certificate into the Active Directory user brother to provide it with an alternative method of authentication. I am now ready to set up my brother device which I will do in the next video. A link to it is on the screen. Thank you for watching.